All right. So thank you all for joining us. This is Rank Art with the Rad Knots Collection of Artists. I'm joined today with, uh, <laughs> I'm joined today by Montessa, the artist. Yes. Who uh, yeah. <laughs> has, has agreed graciously to join us and uh, answer some, some questions about their work. So thank you so much, Montessa, for being a, being a part of this. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so let's just get started with the questions. Um, I always like hearing about it from anybody that I talk to that's in the art scale. So how did you get into the current choice of uh, medium that you that you work with? So my current, the current, current <laughs> medium I work with, um, it's mainly digital art right now, um, whereas before I was mainly only traditional. Oh. And um, that has more of like a meaningful story than my current medium, where like my current one, I was kind of forced into that when I changed my major. Um, yeah. So, and it's, it's just a lot easier for me to use like Adobe Illustrator and all that. Um, but I do have a lot of fun and that's why I use that now because it's just really easy. It's fun. And like, I know what I'm doing. Um, and with traditional art, like my choice of medium is graphite. And I just really enjoy just grabbing a pencil and it's just really relaxing to do it that way. And I have you, paint and all that, but I just don't like to use it all the time. <laughs> you get the, you get the tactile sense of just drawing on a piece of paper. Yeah. I feel you on that. Absolutely. Um, well, how long had you been doing graphite before you were like switching things up and trying to go digital? Was that just always the way that you would draw? Yeah, because that was, um, I started when I was a little kid, which I know a lot of people say in general. Yeah. Um, but it's but always really fun. Did. Yeah, it, it was like a very much a coping mechanism um, with everything that was going on. So um, as soon as I could pick anything up, like they handed me a pencil and I would just start drawing and I drew on toilet paper and on the walls and <laughs> my mom me never too. got mad. <laughs> I don't know if they didn't get mad, but yeah, my parents definitely knew that it was me <laughs> that was drawing on the walls and shoving paper into the DVD or into the, uh, VHS player. Oh my, my gosh. Yeah. No, I not do that. I did everything else. <laughs> Just draw on, draw on yourself, draw on your surroundings. Yeah, mm -hmm. Exactly. I do like smiley faces on the toilet paper and like it would make my mom laugh. And <laughs> well, that's, that. that that's was just cool. a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> bringing, bringing smiles to the world from a very young yeah. age. That's very <laughs> inspiring. I love that. Um, so you say you started when you were really young. Did you know when you were young that this was just going to be your passion for your whole life or did it kind of go in and out and meander? I feel like I didn't think it was forever. I think I was very much in the moment as a kid. I mean, everyone is as a kid. You're not really thinking about um, 30 years down the line or anything like that. But um I knew I was passionate about it at least and I always drew all the time I drew like all the Pokemon for my whole class every single person got a different Pokemon and like I would That's practice in, like the National Geographic books I would go through and draw all the animals in there um and so I had drawings of everything and um I forgot what your question was <laughs> it was just and when did you know it was it was your passion not necessarily um, even creating, but just what you what you've come to do if you're most passionate about. <laughs> I don't know why this is so hard for me. Um, so I basically knew I was passionate in elementary school, yeah. and like when, um, at the same time, I was very much I was very passionate about that, but also being a caterpillar. And I was very serious about that, <laughs> being a veterinarian and um, and a ballerina. So you so wanted to be a caterpillar vet <laughs> veterinarian ballerina who also does art. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. That seems very well-rounded. I love it. <laughs> Just wanted to cover all my bases in Absolutely. case it didn't work out. <laughs> yes. You get to save creatures. You get to dance around. That sounds like a fun time. You get to be a caterpillar. That sounds like a fun time. <laughs> 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 caterpillar. 
<laughs> not the butterfly, but before the butterfly. Yeah, I did didn't want to be the butterfly. I wasn't about that. I'm scared of heights. So I had, I was very thorough with like, yeah, my you chose, you chose correctly. <laughs> yeah. So who would you say is your biggest influence and has that changed over the years? I think as far as art goes, I think I have a lot of different influences. Like over time, it's always been changing, but I don't think there was one famous person. It's always been people. So like behind the bits, um, that's how I met Jenny, who runs Redmont. Um, Like she was an influence. All Like just Instagram artists in general have been a really big influence. Um, And as far as like famous people go, not artists, but I've always been inspired by like Jim Carrey, Robin Williams, uh, Audrey Hepburn, like all the big, all the big, big ones. Names. <laughs> that's very yeah. cool. Well, that's awesome. So yeah, I, I have to say, uh, meeting Jenny was very influential in my life as well. So shout out to Jenny. Yeah, She's bringing I'm the people together. <laughs> I like she was the first one of the first Instagram people I connected with when I started um college that was 2014 oh yeah so I've known her like this whole time but only like um once I started with Red Knot that's when I really got to know her so that's only been a year maybe right yeah it's just it's just fun I love the community it's just a great time um now if you uh if it's not too personal Next question is, what is your strongest memory of your childhood? Mine is sad, unfortunately, but I don't have a problem answering it. Um, My strongest memory is, I don't know how old I was. I think I was maybe like four, maybe four-ish. I remember waking up in my mom's jean jacket and she was holding me in the corner and we were um, sleeping by these mailboxes. And so that's like a really strong memory for some reason. And um, yeah. I don't remember anything else in that moment, just that I was like wrapped up and I was warm and I was with her. Is she pretty, pretty big part of your, your life still? And very much so. I see her all the time. That and seems she like a like very big platform. bonding. Yeah. Yeah. I love her very much. That's awesome. Yay, moms. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. mom. <laughs> <laughs> um all right so next question then is uh what memorable responses have you had to your work either on Instagram or even in person I think I haven't had a ton of um really great comments in person it's mainly been online and I've gotten very sweet messages um but because I'm a pessimist <laughs> A lot of like the main feedback I remember is usually negative. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but um, I can't remember specifically at the moment. I just know um, it does still mean a lot when people look at my work and say something really nice. Um, and I do remember one lady that came up to me. Um, I think this was like 2016. I was doing this live exhibition at Barnes and Noble up in Oro Valley. It was oh, like cool. my whole class. So it wasn't just me. Yeah, um, but that's still cool. Yeah. Often. And it was very nerve wracking because we had to draw live and it was these like six foot drawings. Oh, no. and, <laughs> and That's a lot. I think I have it on my Instagram. I'm not sure, but I did like an Alice in Wonderland, Snow White, um, Hansel and Gretel charcoal scene it was all black and white and ink um That's and it, cool. it was just so big and my mom still has it but this uh this lady everyone was watching me and a bunch of people crowded around me and it felt so cool because there was all these yeah. other people also drawing but they chose me and then this lady was cool. saying how like special this was and that it made her so happy to like see this work and that it brought her back to like her childhood oh that's and cool just, cry <laughs> yes oh my gosh how how lovely to get that sort of feedback I mean like it, it's nice to to be able to see Instagram messages come through on your artwork or stuff but when you get like face-to-face feedback like that I'm like yeah. <laughs> it, <hits different. laughs> it is it does hit different actually I wanted to show you something let me see if I can find my book The book, the book, 
<laughs> Let me see if you oh, if you're right sticker. there. I have I have to unblur my my thing, but you can kind of see everybody's yeah, I can, stuff. I can make it out. There's, <laughs> there's, there's my um staff yeah. art. Oh my gosh, hers is cool. I've just loved I've gotten hers before a couple times for other people. I love all of the hands that you've done. I thought that was yeah. coming from someone who I hate drawing hands. So whenever I see your stuff, I'm like, oh, that's so I cool. hate drawing hands. I still <laughs> hate drawing hands. I have a very hard time. And I remember my friend, like I won't say who, but she <laughs> laughed at me when I was trying to draw a hand and um it wasn't that long ago it was I think a almost a year ago now at the oh, event and I was just so embarrassed but now I'm I'm better at drawing hands. oh you're you're fantastic at it and the fact that you know you do it with minimal shading it's all line line art and color it's a good time I'm a I fan always heard that if you don't have good line art then like the rest of it kind of falls apart. Yeah. Yeah. You have to have a good foundation. I agree. Mm -hmm. I still struggle with having a good foundation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we all do. Every, everyone <laughs> gets, we get do-overs constantly. Um, which I guess brings me to the next, the next thing. What would your dream project be? Either for yourself right now or like something you can work for, work towards in the future. I think my dreams have always evolved and I've always had different ones. Um, I don't know what my dream is at the moment. I know that um, it made me really happy to create the things I just posted. Yeah. Um, but my dream, like my, my original degree before um, I'm like, I'm in my bachelor's program right now, before I did that and I got my associates, it was in animation. And oh, my interesting yeah so I have a degree in that um and my dream was to work for Disney as like that's that's the dream that sounds yeah that's like, the dream you have to go to one of their schools to even get in there but honestly I, I yeah. grew up like I watched all the VHS tapes just like everyone else did but I would yeah. wait past the credits and they would show how they animated like Bambi and how they painted these glass panels Yes. And like a kid, I'm like, I want to do that. Absolutely. And like, that was my dream. I wanted to paint the glass panels. And I hate that. It, like, I'm glad that it's a lot easier now. And like, it's still so hard to animate. Right. But like, it would have been really cool to still have that old process too. I'm not Just sure. Still be able to. Use that. Right. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff that you can do digitally that, that even kind of emulates that. But mm -hmm. it's not as fun as like, I want to paint on glass and make a whole <laughs> stepped background that would That's be so cool like that'd be so awesome it's the only bad part about that is like if you drop it right oof. you're just you're just screwed at that point <laughs> you can paint on acrylic and maybe it won't chip yeah. or break when you when you inevitably drop it like I would so um, yeah that that would have been my dream and a, a, an old one was to work for Tim Burton on stop motion animation that was oh really gosh. interesting and I love stop motion <laughs> I wanted to work for Disney or Pixar and then when yeah. Laika came out and they started doing like Coraline and I Paranormal. love Coraline and, oh, and Paranormal and my, my all-time favorite ones I love it <laughs> my my two big big favorites were the more recent ones, uh, Box Trolls and Kubo and the Two String. Those I two have like seen after. Oh, I want so to though. <laughs> I uh, made a whole bunch of my like I watched Box Trolls one weekend and then the next weekend we had friends over and I'm like oh by the way we're gonna watch Box Trolls and so I did it again and then the next weekend we had more people and it was like here's the thing we have to watch Box Trolls until everybody <laughs> watches Box Trolls. Uh, I highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually that segues nicely into the next question. Uh, what is a book, a movie, and an album that you would always recommend? I think starting off with the book because I'm a big reader I've always been a reader I was a librarian aide for like two 
two years in Ooh. college. Love it. Um, yes. My favorite book was um, The House of Spirits. And I'm forgetting the author right now, but it's magical realism drama. Okay. It's one of my all time favorite books. And I really want to buy it because I the last time I read it was when I started high school. And like it stuck with me all that time. Yeah. And um, it was very mature. And the other book, it's a series called the Maybird series. And I don't think a lot of people ever hear about that, but it, I read that in middle school and it was the first book that got me into all books because I was, wasn't uh-huh. a reader before. I now, because of that book, you're the big reader. Yeah, I read nonstop. And um, now it's mainly like manga and comics, but (laughs) it still counts. There's words on the paper. There's a story that you're consuming. It absolutely counts. (laughs) And I have like 30 different comics or more. I think it's 30 plus that I read almost every day. So I think that counts. Yeah, (laughs) I think that counts. I think you're getting your, your quota in for sure. (laughs) <laughs> that's a lot of good time. what about a movie so movie I'm trying to think because one we already said that where I think my big one is Paranorman because that yeah. just hit that hits me like I don't know the whole thing the whole storyline who he is it just yeah. really to me mm-hmm. um so I think that one I would always recommend and um album I'm not sure because it's very rare for me to like an entire album but I do mean like they're one of my all-time favorite brands so I would recommend like anything from them well the queen the the greatest hits from queen (laughs) (laughs) yeah basically (laughs) honestly I, I forget how many of their songs I actually love and and know because I feel like man I only hear their hits and then you listen to an album you're like oh it's because they were all hits <laughs> the whole album yeah. <laughs> which is great to know well I think those are good recommendations I think that's a good a good call not <laughs> all right so we're going to do a pause we're going to move over to the would you rather questions okay. do you want to do that in the middle yeah sure cut it out. okay I was gonna say we can cut it and, and switch it around <laughs> if we want to all right uh so would you rather this is a silly one would you rather only ever be able to swim in the ocean, but there are definitely sharks and or jellyfish in the area or <laughs> only be able to swim in a pool, but it might have a poo in it? <laughs> I'll take my chances with the poo because I'm very scared of the ocean. I okay. mean, I'm scared of pools too. It's ridiculous, honestly. I'm scared of the shadows in a pool when like oh. you can see and you know nothing's there. But mm-hmm. I'm still scared. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I absolutely agree with that. I remember um, growing up, we had the one of those giant pools at like a local um, community pool. And they had just put it in. It was just a square. It wasn't even like the amoeba shaped pool. It was just Aww. a square pool. But the deep end was like 20 feet deep. That's and I don't go down there. That's too far. <laughs> <laughs> but they did that because they had the high height. Uh, board and I'm like also not going up there not going up there not going down there I'm just gonna chill on the surface of the water that's the funny part too because I have a similar memory that like egged on my fear of uh, (laughs) the deep end because my uncle actually had a ridiculously deep pool and it was the amoeba shape that you talked about yeah Um, but this was so deep that the shadows were so dark and I'm like oh no 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 (laughs) I do remember I remember having uh, there was a distinct memory of seeing the uh the light fixture but it's like a bulb so it looked like an eyeball not not I've never thought about that not into it (laughs) no no thank you (laughs) don't want (laughs) <laughs> okay all right so next would you rather question would you rather be a reverse centaur or a reverse mer person <laughs> you know what I'll take the mer person because I'm actually reading a comic about that <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's perfect I <laughs> love that okay I'll take that <laughs> you'll be the mer person but you're not going to go the- into the deep parts of the ocean you'll just yeah. chill in the shallows I'm into it <laughs> 
Okay. Would you rather know the history of every object you touched or be able to talk mm. to animals? Shit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I want both of those things. I would be down for either. Um, dang it. See, I'm cottage core and dark academia. <laughs> um, I think honestly, you know, I'll take the I'll take the objects because it's okay. not like I don't think my cat is that profound. He could be. I'll he never might know. Be, but you know, <laughs> he's also just a nice companion, and you don't necessarily yeah. have to know what he's thinking. Like I don't need him to tell me that he thinks I stink, and I look bad. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're giving me a bath. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, as so a <laughs> yeah what uh, were you gonna say? I was gonna say as a level seven druid I I have to be able to talk to animals that's the one that I would choose oh really yeah. <laughs> that would be so cool I just like it it's really cool being able to just touch something and just know everything about it that would be <sighs> rad but also yeah. maybe maybe drive you crazy but like in a good way I don't know <laughs> I wear gloves like when I <laughs> <laughs> when you don't want to, when you don't want to know, yeah. um, would you rather, okay, so this is the final question. Would you rather be able to move to a new city or town every week or never be able to leave the city or town you were born in? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one for moving, but I don't know that I could stick it or stick around in the place that I stayed. That I stayed. I'm fine with moving, but like every week is a lot. But also I was born in Whittier, California, and I heard that's not the best place to be. And we didn't even live there. I have right. no idea why I was born in Whittier. <laughs> Just passing through. Uh, I've been like all over the place and I've been, uh, I've lived in a few different states. And so I think I'd be okay with living in a different city. And yeah. Just try you just have to be a minimalist at that point living out of yeah. one single suitcase you know what, and that fine. is it <laughs> <Don't need> at <laughs> all. that's what I have to do then that's what I have to do <laughs> all right so we'll get back to the back to the interview questions uh number number next number next <laughs> now that I know that you wanted you were aspiring to be a ballerina when you were a kid do you have a favorite dance move Dang, I had one and I forgot. I think it's not a specific move, but I really like the TikTok dances. And like, I like the Doja Cat one that she included in her, um, what the hell was that video? What was the really famous one? The famous Doja Cat? Disco. Yeah, she was all discoed out. Dang it, it was so hard. Oh. <laughs> but it was, it was a Doja Cat one. Um say so that's what it was so like I love that dance dance from that all right we'll put it in we'll put a a little video in here to show (laughs) what the doji cat say so dance is awesome awesome um so uh you are currently living in Tucson right going Mm -hmm. to school there do you have a favorite or most inspirational place in Tucson I think one of my favorite places because I love films is Roadhouse Cinema. And like, I very much recommend going there if like you ever come down to Tucson. Um, yes. They have recliners and like gourmet food, like gourmet popcorn and like the whole okay. shit. Okay. I love it in there. I love that. <laughs> and it's like two person seating. So it's, you're not all grouped together. It's very oh, much. awesome. Everybody has their own little bubble. Yeah. Couple, yeah. And I absolutely love it. And they have waiters that come in. So like you just have your menu and you're sitting down and you get to just call people over whenever you want. I don't like to do that. I never do that. I'll call but once to my order and that's it. But it's possible. <laughs> and that's what's cool. Yeah, it's possible. And I think um, the other place I was going to mention, <clears throat> because like a lot of my life was in California, um, mm-hmm. I really loved like the place that would be inspirational would be like the Huntington Library because oh. it is deceiving and like you think it's this small thing and like you hear library and you think it's a library it's not a library it's a huge art museum with like all these different gardens oh. and like there's the Japanese garden with a tea house and like there's um manuscripts and there's like just oh. famous artworks everywhere and it's That's so cool 
you cannot like see the entire thing in one day it's kind of like when you go to the Louvre if you ever go I've never been but (laughs) I'm gonna virtually go to the Louvre soon I I heard that that was possible almost (laughs) so like you have to spend a couple days to explore the Huntington Library that sounds pretty awesome and Huntington is not that far of a it's like a five hour six hour drive from here it's not that far I love it I'm going soon, someday. (laughs) Awesome. Okay, so now the next question was what your favorite medium is, but we already went over that was graphite. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you have a next favorite medium after graphite? I think once I took figure drawing, it was charcoal, which I thought I would hate. Yeah. I, I loved it because I learned like the subtraction method where you just take your fingers and you dab away after like you smear the entire page with charcoal. So like I loved that and I loved drawing people and um a little kneaded eraser to get the really highlight highlights. Yeah. It's a good time. But like that. And I think maybe maybe gouache after that. Wow, you're choosing all the ones that are like, you better know what you're doing or you're gonna make a mess. <laughs> I just go all, for it. <laughs> that's that's pretty rad. That is pretty awesome. Because yeah, I painted one thing in gouache and I don't think I should have. I I created I a little a <laughs> I created a little Hellboy. It was almost like a marionette doll. It was just a Hellboy and it was segmented. And I needed a very specific red and I only had it in gouache. <laughs> so I painted him in gouache and my hands were that same color for the whole time that I was, yeah, I was like, insane. which like on a random note, I love Hellboy. I freaking love him. And when you said favorite. Marionette, I nerded it <laughs> out and, and I thought of Ladybug and not the puppet. And I don't know oh. if you know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's Miraculous Ladybug. <laughs> it's a little kid show (laughs) oh but it's like my guilty pleasures and I've seen like every single episode I've seen every single movie for that and like ridiculous (laughs) (laughs) and I'll send you a picture of that Hellboy because yeah please do it was I made it I made it it has to have been five or six years ago maybe even seven or eight now that I'm thinking about it but I I made it to when I found out that Mike McNola was going to be at Comic-Con that year, I was like, well, I have to make a Hellboy thing because I love him. <laughs> and so I show him this thing that I made and it is basically a limp rag doll Hellboy. And he goes, of all the Hellboy things that I've ever seen somebody make, this is the limpest. And I'm like, I don't know how to take that. I don't know how to take that, but thank you, I guess. It's for memorable, me. so that means he remembers it, and that's amazing. <laughs> I hope so. I hope he remembers it. That is so great. I think I actually went that year to that con. To that particular con? I think. Is, was it's, it the it's, one that was in Arizona, or was it like the big Yeah, yeah, it was, it was here. I've only ever gone to the ones here in Phoenix because I, I stay in a place. I don't go places. I need to go more places. <laughs> I've gone to the Phoenix one once and we got stuck outside with like no water, no shade. Oh, that no. Was- and then the other one was the Tucson one. And again, with the, with the Phoenix one, that was like, it was a lot of fun, except like, again, the heat and on the drive up there, I decided to be, I decided to be ornery and like we had the schedule written out. Oh. And so I stuck it out the window. <laughs> playing around oh, no. and then the wind caught just, it <laughs> oh no forever gone Every well day, so I winged it but like there was all these panels we wanted to go to so we only ended up finding like I think three and like out of this there's, whole there's an app for that now so <laughs> you don't have to worry about losing it solved <laughs> I'm, I'm all blurry I didn't mean to be all blurry Come back to me. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just looked up and I realized, wow, I am the background at this point. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> All right, so we'll move on to the next. Okay, I want your opinion on this. Okay. Do you think social media is a necessary evil to communicate or a useful tool? I think it's both. That almost sounds the same. Like it's, I feel like that, that it's necessary 
um, for a lot of different reasons, especially for like social justice. Like there's a ton That's that true. I would have seen otherwise. And there's so many people I would have never met. And like, I talk to my friends on there. I meet people on there. All, well, like meet people on there all the time. And like, I wouldn't have known any of you because I don't go to Phoenix. I don't, I've right. never lived up in Phoenix. So like, I would have gone on so much. And like, I mainly use it for my art anyways. So like, and I very much have curated it over time. So I don't see like super toxic stuff um, that makes me feel bad. I don't, I block everything out I mute people if I need to like I, I very much cleansed my social media so I see what I want to see and then of yeah. course like things that really matter I I absolutely agree with that um because I, I I hear people say oh my gosh Facebook is so negative I'm like yeah I don't follow those people <laughs> yeah that's like easy enough <laughs> And that's what I actually deactivated my Facebook a long time ago. I do not go on there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it depends on if you're willing to cut family out of your exactly. life and just I would have had to do that, which I mean I did already yeah. <laughs> for the most part, even right. on my phone. So, but like I didn't need Facebook or anything. I don't use Twitter. Um, I have YouTube, I have Instagram. Yeah. That's all that's I need. All, that's all you need. <laughs> Twitter is a <laughs> crazy hellscape and Facebook is just <laughs> kind of a swamp. <laughs> it's just like yeah. logging through it every day and yeah nobody wants to do that. <laughs> well then um, do you have uh, any opinions on the art gallery scene with that same kind of question do you think art galleries are a necessary evil or legitimately useful and you can see their merit? I think it depends on what kind of art you make because I think it I think it depends on what art, art gallery you're going to because I think that there are some uh, that like probably shouldn't exist <laughs> anymore um, where like they're very so selective to the point that like people are, people are underrepresented and I'm yeah. for the I'm for art galleries that are inclusive and like maybe that means that they're not a gallery I don't know but I would yeah. rather go to that and like have my art there than some like prissy place that only wants like one right type of art I don't need the prestige I just want to yeah. I just want to be in a community of my peers or something yeah. <laughs> thereof more concerned I, with that and community than I am about like selling this multi-million dollar piece in some fancy place absolutely. I really could care less <laughs> absolutely I I agree with that um Ooh, I forgot that I wrote this one down. What superpower would you have and why? Other than the would you rather question that we had. <laughs> this one you get to choose. Oh, superpowers. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of the, I forgot you did have the um, right. animals power. I was thinking of the fish person. <laughs> <laughs> Your superpower is you can breathe underwater, but you can't really swim that well because you've got people feet. <laughs> um I think I think my supervi supervisor <laughs> my um superpower would be maybe the power of persuasion and like not to use it for bad yeah I might be very tempted to, <laughs> to like get people to just like see things my way like I don't want to use it for that um but I probably would <laughs> once in a while no well, but, none of us are perfect you yeah exactly do what you can perfect. with what you've got but, I think with that, it's mainly about um, making making things better. So like I could persuade the government maybe and like not in a bad way. It's not going to be an anarchy or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. Um, just like just make sure everything is solid, like gay rights and like just yeah. you know, all that shebang. I just want everything good. So I would very yes. much like persuasion and to get the job I want. Right. You talk your way into it because you know what that you can do it. Exactly. So you're not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes, but you just need yeah. them to see. Exactly. I see what you mean. See, you're so already been, persuasive. <laughs> but I've been um, I mean not to go off topic. Hold on, let me close yeah. the door. Um I've been 
hindered in interviews before. I think it was only one time where I was so anxious um, that they couldn't see me for who I was. And um, they only hired me because I knew one of the interviewers that vouched for my character. (laughs) I was so shaky and I was interviewing for um, this mentor job where I was a peer, I was going to be a peer mentor. So I talked to people and they're like, I don't know about this girl, but like, you can see I can talk to people it was just an off day so again the persuasion would have been very helpful would have been although easy. I didn't need it I didn't need it in the end <laughs> <laughs> you would have been able to at least cut through all of that so that they didn't have yeah. a weird a weird it first impression <laughs> that reminds me of the uh rumor character from Umbrella Academy did you ever yeah, watch did you ever read the book the um no. comic book Mm -mm. I didn't get a chance to read it I just watched the show and I didn't get to watch season two which I'm annoyed at myself for you just kind of fall into patterns of just watching the same thing over and over and over again because it's like there's only two seasons there's only two seasons out right now right right right. I just we we just haven't watched the second season (laughs) I love that show I think they did a a pretty good job of it Mm mm-hmm I think oh. so too. I love the rumor, the rumor trick. I forgot her name. I I'm can't so- remember her name. I can only yeah. hear the song that they all <laughs> sing to they all dance together with I, I that's- think of that too. The one that comes to mind is the dance scene between um her and the gorilla man <laughs> where it's like not oh. I mean they're not actually ha- oh wait, yeah. that was <laughs> not a spoiler. It's fine. Nobody it's knows not- what we're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, but, either yeah. that or we'll or we'll bleep it out. And it's yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry right. for going on for so long. <laughs> That's totally fine. Okay, so uh, next next question is: What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? I actually took a note about it, and it's in the other room, and I can't grab it. But um, I recently had a webinar with um, Jeremy Wen. He's a comic artist. I don't know if you know him, but he's uh, he's printed with Radnot. And um, he, okay. I forgot if he works for the New Yorker or not, but he makes comics for them a lot. Okay. Um, and he was just talking for like an hour about um, how he got started. And he gave very good advice about um being who you are and showing your voice and not stifling yourself to fit into like what you're seeing because a lot of people um put on like a very um I don't know how to say it but everyone tries to be like everyone else and he was saying not to do that that your voice is valuable and that you should use it and like let people get to know you don't just put up a persona and um you if you have a platform use it for others so like you're you're supposed to say you're supposed to make room for your own voice and other people's voices absolutely that was just great (laughs) because you just put it so well yeah that is a that is a great piece of advice now if you were asked for a piece of advice from your own um experiences what is one piece of advice you would give to somebody wanting maybe to get into the same sort of art space or kind of not not necessarily following your footsteps footsteps but if somebody was asking you as an aspiring artist what would you what would you give them as as advice I think oh Oh, there he is (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think take what's given to you if there's an opportunity try for it even if you think that you're not going to get it and it's like I mean don't take every single opportunity that comes your way but if like you're wanting to do something go for it don't stop yourself because you feel like oh I'm not experienced yet oh I need like this much time before I can like submit work to something um I think that hinders a lot of people where they just keep waiting and like yeah. you never actually feel ready you're never 100 percent like confident in yourself at least for me I'm never 100 percent confident I, like, I, I agree I feel the same way I, like <laughs> I, I'm still not confident with my work um but 
I still try anyways. And I've been, that's gotten me into a lot where I've been in like a, a zine or a sign, whatever it's called. And like, I've been in um, publications in the newspaper and I've been in exhibitions and like that wouldn't have happened if I let like negative self-talk and um, other people's opinions and stuff get to me. It does get to me, but yeah, I put through it and I did it anyways. And then That's I got great. where I am. Woo. Yes. Yeah. Positive self-talk. <laughs> that is, that is the best, best possible for me anyways, just hearing it from somebody else. I'm like, my feels too. I always don't feel this way. So I, I completely agree and I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So final question is something that I always like asking any artist that I know, do you feel like your artistic process, just you creating, would you call that your escape from the world? Or do you feel like that's something that you like to share with people? I think it's been both. I think it really depends on the situation because I've I've made things just for me, but it's been a while where like right, right now it's mainly been for others and like my um, internship and my jobs, everything I make has to be for that. Um, yeah. And then like I, when I started on Instagram, I participated in all those like drawing challenges and like the map the maps um Halloween challenge and all of that yeah and like all those it was for me but it was to connect with other people and like show what I got <laughs> kind yeah. of thing. Um, Absolutely. but it, it used to be more of an escape than it is right now and I'm, I'm trying to get back to that part um and I'm I'm not quite there yet I always feel like I'm running out of time um yeah yeah but I, no. I used to dive very deep into art and that, that used to be all I did. And just into the wee hours, I mm -hmm. would just keep drawing in my little space. And um, if I didn't have paper, I would use like nail polish on the walls. And like, I've been in weird situations. <laughs> so, you yeah, take you use what you can. <laughs> yeah, it was very much my escape um, for a very, very long time until I got to like college. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, and I was I, I always like to hear what people think because sometimes it is entirely for them and and the fact that it comes to a piece that they could show the world, they're like, yeah, sure, here it is. And I'm like, that's like the whole the whole thing. <laughs> the journey and the destination. It's like interwoven for me. Well, that's awesome. Um, this is, this has been a very awesome conversation. I really loved learning all of the things, all of your, your bits and bobs that you've got <laughs> going on. Um, where can people find your, your stuff online? I think mainly Instagram. So at Montessa, the artist with the little underscores. Yeah, underscores, Montessa underscore the underscore artist. And then um, on Radnot's website, you can go to artists and then find my name in there. Hey y'all, thank you very much for watching this featured artist interview with Montessa the Artist, brought to you by Radnot Prints. We hope you've enjoyed this peek into the mind of our artist collective, and we'll see you in the next video. Please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more artist-based content in the future. We hope you have a rad day. Bye!